God wants to be known. God wants to be known by each and every one of his people. And when God sees hunger, God will never deny, disregard the heart that is hungry after him. That's why the Bible said in Psalm 51, I believe is verse 17. He said, the, he said God's sacrifices are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you are not going to despise. God is always responsive to men's brokenness, men's desire to want to know him more. Matthew 5 and verse 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. They shall be filled. God will never disregard a heart that has a quest for him. Somebody who just wants to know God more, whose desire is to know him more, to know him. What did Paul say in Philippians 3 and verse 10? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. You see, because knowing God is in degrees. Thank God for where you are, but there are still dimensions in God that you are yet to discover, that you are yet to fathom. Romans 11 and verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches. This is a theologian, a man who had worked with God, seen God's power in demonstration of different ways, I mean, in different ways. This is a man of Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, where the Bible says God wrote special miracles. It says miracles are special by themselves, but they are not special miracles by the hands of Paul. He didn't even have to go to places. He would just send aprons and handkerchiefs to places, and the same power that would have been present if you were physically there was manifesting through those faith extenders. And this man will now say in Romans chapter 11 and verse 33 that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable to him. I want to know God. Many people talk at times you can see the shallowness of their knowledge of who God is. They don't know God. And you see, it's okay if you don't, but you want to. The Bible told us about the sons of, sons, of, sons of Eli that they did not know God. But in talking about Samuel, he said Samuel did not yet know the Lord. They didn't know God. They were not interested in knowing God. But Samuel was just in the place where he had uninformed eagerness, uninformed enthusiasm. In him was a desire to know. And in the process of time, he began to know that God. He began to know God. I think it's in Hosea chapter 6. Hosea 6, I'm not sure now, verse 2, verse 3. He said, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, look at it, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Look at what verse 3 says. He says, look at it in the King James KJV. He said, then, then shall we know if we follow one to know. Then shall we know if we follow one to know. If you keep pursuing God, he will help eradicate every level of ignorance in your life. If you just keep pursuing him, he will bring you to a place where you can say, I know in whom I have believed. 2 Timothy 1 verse 12, Paul got there. 2 Timothy 1 12, he said, I know in whom I have believed. He is able to keep against that day that which I have committed into his hand. So you can commit your children to God and you know he's going to keep them. Jude was going to talk about him in Jude chapter 1, the only chapter of the book of Jude, verse 24 and 25. He said he is able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from stumbling. He's able to keep you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's able to. There are so many things in God that you will begin to discover as you know him more. Philippians 3, 21, Paul said he's able to subdue all things unto himself. There is absolutely nothing that God does not have with Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you see, it's, it must go beyond just a mere rhetoric for you. It must become something that is coming from a place of knowing, a place of conviction. You have experienced God to that level. You've seen situations that seem hopeless and you handed them over to him and you saw him 
fixing what seemed irreparable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can you can tell Ezekiel, the Ezekiel of chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel, that anything is impossible. When God took him to a valley filled with dry bones, and God asked him a question, can these bones live? And Ezekiel thought about it. If I said no, it would be wrong because I don't know the capacity of the one who is talking to me. If I say yes, what if he says, go ahead and make it happen? I know I can't. So he said, God, only you know. And God that said, let me show you how to make things happen. Uh, we can make the impossible possible. Man and God in partnership. Uh, and this is what this life is all about. Uh, John chapter 5 and verse 17. Jesus said, my father walks either tone and I walk. That's partnership uh, between the mortal and the immortal. Mark 16, 20. The Lord was walking with them. That's partnership. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 for God was with him that's partnership that's partnership so God took him to a valley filled with dry bones and God says you've got a role to play and I've got a role to play you will have to play your part and then I'm going to add my grace and my blessing on the part that you have chosen to play if you don't put down the seed and you don't water the seed and I can increase is nothing. Uh, you first have to plant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, you, you must do your part. Uh, God's super only comes upon man's natural. Uh, if you don't open your mouth wide, Psalm 81 and verse 10, uh, and the Lord that brought you uh, out of Egypt, open your mouth wide, uh, and then I will fill it up. Uh, so if you don't open your mouth wide, uh, there is no way I'm going to fill a closed mouth. Uh, so you will always have a step to take. It's the steps that you take uh, that God is going to order. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Uh, you will first have to knock and then God will see to it. Uh, and on the other side of the door uh, that seems closed, uh, he will raise the voice of advocacy uh, in your favor. Uh, and they will ensure that the closed door opens uh, of its own accord unto you. Uh, so God took him to a valley filled with dry bones uh, and God says prophesy to these bones. Uh, and God told him what to say. Uh, you don't just speak out of presumption. You hear from God uh, in Ezekiel 37 and verse 7. Uh, and I prophesied uh, as I was commanded. Uh, so if you are facing somebody uh, or you are dealing with a boss or dealing with a prospective client uh, that just seems impossible uh, don't just keep talking and uh, hear from God uh, Job chapter 6 and verse 25 uh, how forcible uh, are right words right words uh, it can give you a tongue and, uh, and a wisdom that your adversary uh, will not be able to gain say not to resist uh, there is just a word in season uh, he said he has given me the tongue of the learned uh, to speak a word in season uh, to him that is weary. Uh, Ezekiel wasn't just prophesying. Uh, he was prophesying uh, as he was being inspired, uh, as he was being prompted by God. Uh, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, I believe. Uh, holy men spoken uh, as they were inspired inspired by the Holy Ghost uh, and these things are not just for ministry or preaching uh, it's for daily living uh, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 uh, is divine powers given to us uh, all things that pertain not to preaching but to life uh, and to godliness uh, just living out the Christian life uh, on a daily basis uh, not having a Sunday life uh, and then a Monday life no just one life uh, and you leave this everywhere when you're talking to your child, talking to your spouse. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, leading a team, leading an organization, making a pitch. Uh, whatever it is you are doing, uh, it's the same Holy Ghost. Uh, it's the same Holy Ghost. Uh, and the principles are universal. Uh, you are the one that will not appropriate them. Uh, whether to the context of service um, uh, or to the context of leadership uh, or to the context of marketing. Uh, whatever context is it is beautiful for every situation. Uh, you can limit where God gets to. Uh, you can limit what God is, God is uh, 
God is a part of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, you can limit him to just church. Um, uh, but he wants to follow you to the boardroom tomorrow. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Uh, and stand by you like he did um, uh, with Moses. Exodus 33 um, uh, and verse 14. He said to Moses, uh, my presence will go with you. Um, uh, and I will give you rest or success. Um, uh, listen friends, in our sector Joshua, um, uh, in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. Um, uh, it's not only Moses I'm going to stand by. Uh, as I was with Moses, uh, so I will be with you. Um, uh, and friends, uh, it wasn't just with Moses and Joshua. Um, uh, he's with you. Um, uh, it says in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Uh, Let your conversation be with that covetousness. Uh, be content with soft things as you have. Uh, for he himself has said, uh, I will never leave you. Uh, neither will I ever forsake you. Uh, even when you find yourself in your valley seasons, uh, our God is not a fear weather friend. Uh, he's a friend for all seasons. Uh, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Uh, the Bible says, yeah, though I walk through the valley uh, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil uh, because you are with me, your rod uh, and your staff, the Comfort me. Uh, say to your neighbor, you will never walk alone. How did we get here? We're talking about men knowing God. Um, uh, Ezekiel could not be told later in life uh, that God God has impossibility. No, you can't tell Ezekiel uh, that for, for that with God there's something called. A, a, a closed case. Uh, it's not possible. Uh, not after what happened in that valley. Uh, not after what he saw God do. Uh, not just to dead bodies, but to dry bones. Uh, these were dead bodies uh, that had grown dry, scattered everywhere. Uh, and when he began to prophesy, the Bible said, uh, bone came to his bone. Uh, no matter how disjointed, ruined, uh, seemingly hopeless, uh, a life or a situation may be, uh, uh, just have a man who knows God come into that situation uh, and begin to declare the mind of God uh, for there is hope for a dream uh, even if it is cut down by the saint of water uh, it will sprout again uh, and the tender shoots will not this is why uh, I just desire that men will just come to church and uh, listen friends uh, all you need to do is to allow us uh, to maintain this engagement long enough and, uh, just maintain this engagement long enough. Uh, I wish I can sit down uh, with everyone one by one and, uh, and give you all the time. Uh, but you and I know you don't have the time uh, and I don't have the time anymore. Uh, but we can meet regularly like this and, uh, on a weekly basis and, uh, and through this engagement I guarantee you uh, the greatness of God in you uh, must find expression. Uh, it is in possible to sit um, uh, under the watch of the water of God's word um, uh, and your life remains the same. It is impossible. Uh, the Bible said in Ezekiel 2 and verse 2, when he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me uh, and set me on my feet. Uh, you are arrows um, uh, and arrows don't shoot themselves. Uh, arrows need an uh, no rocket launches itself. Um, uh, I've been to Geverstein where NASA is um, uh, and no rocket launches itself. Um, uh, rockets have to be launched. Planes have to be full flown. Uh, arrows have to be shot. Um, uh, and there is a way these arrows are shot. Um, uh, just sit um, uh, under an anointed ministry. Um, uh, it happened to Esther. Um, uh, just listening to a mother um, uh, she found her way to the palace. Uh, does he hear God's word long enough uh, the light of God will shine in the midst of your darkness uh, drive out your fears uh, drive out your unbelief uh, deal with your high places uh, the enemy will do everything to keep you from God's presence uh, this was what Jesus was telling Martha uh, he said you are worried about everything uh, except the most important thing uh, you have misplaced your priorities uh, you can be in church and be distracted uh, Luke chapter 10, 40, 41, 42. Uh, the Bible said, Jesus looked at Martha uh, and said, you are distracted. 
distracted by much serving. Uh, she was distracted by service. Uh, service became a distraction for Martha. Uh, it was service she thought she was doing, uh, but service became a distraction uh, for her. And Jesus said, no, first things first. Uh, don't just be working. Uh, also have a work. Uh, the work is what gives you strength for the work. Uh, if you don't have a work and, uh, and you're doing the work, um, uh, you will eventually burn out. You will be stressed out. Um, uh, but when you have a work, um, uh, then from the place of fullness, uh, not the place of emptiness, uh, from the place of fullness, uh, you can serve. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 11, uh, I think also verse 23. Uh, it said that which I received of the Lord uh, is also what I have delivered to you. Uh, if you don't receive it, uh, there is no way you can give it to others. Uh, it is what you have received. Uh, Acts chapter 3 verse 6, uh, such as I have. Uh, if you don't receive it, uh, there is no way you can give it. Uh, that's why you must prioritize fellowship. Uh, prioritize the world. Uh, what was Mary doing? Uh, Mary just sat down to listen to the world. Uh, uh, it says she has chosen the good part. Luke 10 42. Uh, and no one can take it away from her. Uh, once you know it, you know it. Uh, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Uh, once you know, you know. Uh, that's why the writer of the book of Job could say uh, in Job chapter 13, I believe, and verse 1. Uh, he said, I am not inferior to you. Uh, look at it. Job 13. Uh, can I have verse 1 or verse 2? Uh, Job chapter 13. Uh, look at it. He said, I'm not inferior to you uh, because what you know, um, I also know. Uh, you have no advantage at all over me. Uh, I know what I need to know. Um, uh, I know how to handle a situation like this. Uh, how to handle marital crisis. Uh, how to handle financial setback. Uh, how, to explain, how to handle career. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, how to handle a, a major debilitation or attack on my health. Uh, maybe you just went for routine check uh, and then they gave you a bad medical verdict and uh, you know how to handle a situation like that uh, you've read the knowledge of God's word and uh, you've spent it, you've immersed yourself, you see it's like when you have a foam uh, or you have a sponge and, uh, when you immerse it in something uh, and you shake it, what will come out? Uh, what you immersed it inside and, uh, so if somebody has been immersed in fear and, uh, fear and, uh, that in our family we don't live long uh, we always have this hereditary sickness in our family. Uh, the day he sees a sign or a symptom uh, that looks like what he's been afraid of, uh, his fear will be his response. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, but when you have been spending time in God's word uh, and you have read scriptures like Romans chapter 11, and the Bible says in verse 17 uh, that you are not a partaker of the, of the, of the richness um, and the fatness of the tree. Uh, that is, you not have um, another life flowing in you. Uh, you are not just an Ebola or an Akiola or an Opatio. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, you have the life of God flowing in you. Uh, and this life um, that you have uh, is the life of God in you. Uh, we we call it the Zoe life of God. And, uh, we call it a life that is unconquerable. Uh, that is our mandate in this house. Um, living off a life um, uh, that is unending. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 16 uh, calls it the endless life, um, uh, the indestructible life, um, uh, a life that cannot be violated. Um, uh, are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Uh, when you have heard enough of God's word, in you uh, and then the doctor tells you you ain't gonna live long and, uh, I just heard about a gentleman a 39 year old man uh, the doctor told him if you quit what you do right now uh, you have the chance uh, to live for another two years uh, he said you are 39 but your body uh, are so aged and, uh, you have the body 
of the 90 year old person uh, what have you been doing to yourself uh, so the doctor told him you need to quit your current, current job and, uh, and if you do quit that job uh, you have a chance to live for another two more years uh, live till about 41 uh, well the guy ran to the pastor uh, and the pastor told him it's okay uh, the first thing to do uh, is to first of all work upon your mind uh, you see it's important what you believe uh, is anybody hearing what I'm saying uh, is in, for, for as a man thinks in his heart and uh, so is he uh, you have the information from the doctor uh, but it's also the in revelation uh, from the ultimate physician uh, the one who is your covenant physician uh, and he says in Psalm 91 number 16 uh, with long life uh, I will satisfy you uh, and show you my salvation uh, he says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 uh, it can quicken your mortal body uh, by his spirit that dwells in you uh, it says in Psalm 107 and verse 20 uh, his word can heal you uh, and deliver you out of all your destructions uh, it says in Proverbs chapter 4 uh, and verse 20 to verse 22 my son uh, attend to my words uh, incline your ear to my sayings uh, and then not depart from your eyes uh, keep them in the midst of your heart uh, for they are life to those who find them uh, and health or medicine uh, to all their flesh uh, he now said in verse 23 the next thing uh, he said guard your heart uh, with all diligence uh, for out now that's important uh, because we always thought that Proverbs 4:23 uh, is talking about what you want to keep from coming in uh, but he's saying no it's important what is coming out uh, guard your heart with all diligence uh, because out of it out of it are the issues of life uh, so guard your heart and how uh, by closing your mouth and uh, when negative thought wants to come out of your mouth uh, guard your heart and uh, are you hearing what i'm saying uh, even if the thought crosses your mind uh, it should not escape out of your mouth uh, because death and life uh, are in the power of the tongue and, uh, so what do you say in the face of, uh, of you being told you have two more years to live and, uh, Psalm 118 and verse 17. Uh, I shall not die uh, but leave uh, to declare uh, the works of the Lord. Um, uh, well, this gentleman that they told should quit um, uh, didn't have to quit what he was doing. Uh, the last time this pastor saw him, uh, the pastor then saw him years after. Uh, he had turned 75 um, uh, and he was still doing what they told him not to do. Uh, he, he last, then after that he saw him again uh, he retired at 82 are you hearing what i'm saying uh, 82 82 doctor said if you want to live for more two more years uh, you've got to stop what you are doing uh, the guy didn't stop what he was doing uh, he only not knew how to master are you hearing what i'm saying uh, because light gives you mastery uh, genesis 1 and verse 16 uh, the bible says he made two great light uh, and i'm declaring this morning uh, genesis 1 and verse 3 in every area where there is darkness because in 2nd Corinthians 4 verse 6 the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness in every area of darkness darkness of doubt unbelief darkness of I've got to, I've got to I've got to hustle and struggle to make it in life. And uh, this morning I declare, let there be light and uh, let there be light and uh, let there be light let there be light it's okay to relocate if you are relocating based on light. If you don't relocate based on light, a lizard in Nigeria will not become a crocodile in GF Kennedy. It will still be doing like this. A, cro a lizard, wherever he goes to. If he's a war gecko in Nigeria, he will not become an alligator if he goes to Heathrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will still be a mole. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? The change has to happen. James Harlan said, um, the first law of success is first within and then without. You can travel within and remain static on the outside. It's not possible. This is the essence of engagements like this. The reason why I'm sweating like this, like a Christmas God, 
is so that you may succeed. It would have been a waste. It would be an effort in futility. If three years down the line, you see the same with you. No change, no improvement. Nothing has changed for the better. I wasted my time, you wasted your time. We should be redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. People shouldn't... When every time you are a year older, you should be a lot wiser. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. A wiser woman. A wiser man. Wiser in all metrics. Wiser. This is the essence of encounters. It says the Lord, the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise. Making wise. You may start out not knowing what to do about situations in life. You are at a loss. How to handle a heartbreak. You are at a loss. How to handle betrayal. You are at a loss. How to handle disappointment. You are at a loss. It's okay. That you be the human. That you be the human. And God understands your humanity. He gave you capacity to have feelings. To have a sense of taste. So he knows what it means to be disappointed. The Bible says you don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize. No. Hebrews 5, Hebrews 4, and verse, verse 15. Our high priest is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Is it not in Judges chapter 10 and verse 16? Judges 10, he says, he, he could no longer endure. His soul could not endure the misery of Israel. He saw them in misery and he couldn't handle it anymore. He said, in all their afflictions, he was afflicted. In all. Judges 10, 16, if you can pull it out for me, you guys can help me. Okay. He could not, his soul, you know, you know the meaning of soul? A capacity for feeling. His soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. In all their afflictions, Isaiah 63, I think verse 9. In all their afflictions, he was afflicted. So, God understands your pain points. He's not indifferent to your pains. But you see, there's a way to handle your pain. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? There's a way to handle your struggles. He wants to give you enough light and walk you through that process. Where you can begin to walk on your high places. And that your weakness, your disappointments, your setbacks, the betrayers will not have the best of you. Romans 12 and verse 21. You are not overcome by evil. You overcome evil with good. And people are becoming victims in life. They go through disappointment. They turn their backs on God. They go through betrayal. They turn their backs on life. They become suspicious of every relationship. That is, you have become a victim of that circumstance. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't let what has happened color your worldview. You know what the psalmist said? I think in Psalm 1, and I'm not sure whether Psalm 111, 111, or Psalm 116, 116, verse. Somebody should find it for me. Is that 11 or 116? He said, I said in my haste that all men are liars. In my haste, I jumped into a hasty conclusion. Thank you. Let me celebrate them. I said, in my haste, all men. In my haste, I hurriedly concluded, man, don't do business in Nigeria. Nigeria is a bad place to do business. Family members is a bad option. But of course, People are people. But when you're a man of the spirit, you won't be a victim of error. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will just learn, okay, what happened was I allowed my sentiments to override my sensitivity in that situation. I didn't allow discernment to kick in. Because let me tell you this, when the chips are down and you truly want to be honest with yourself, every time something went wrong as a Christian, when you're doing a review, you would know you had a check. You had a check. You had a caution. You just ignored it. 
You just didn't, because God wouldn't shout at you. It's a still small voice. He won't shout at you. He will give you a warning. Don't do that. Don't. The Bible says the peace of God acts like an umpire for the heart. What's an umpire? A regulator of a game. Don't do that. Don't make that move. Don't commit to that relationship. Or take your time more. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? But people just jump. And, and the beautiful thing about the Holy Ghost, who is our GPS on earth, is that no matter how messed up your life is, from that place, it can still recalculate your route to your expected hand in God. Oh, yagalaba, yagalaba. And it doesn't matter how messed up things are right now. Every time the, a, a just man falls down, he picks from the ground something he will need at the top. You come out stronger. You come out better from all of that. It's human beings that sign off and sign out and give up on other life's possibilities. Not God. Not God. Are you hearing what I'm saying, friends? So when you come to meetings like this, you are coming to have intelligent engagements with God. Is it not in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18? He said, come now, let us reason together. Let us reason together. So God wants to engage us in intelligent conversations. Let us reason together. Let's look at life from another perspective. See light in my light. See what you are going through from my stance, my viewpoint, from the way I see it. Learn what you need to learn. And hand in hand with me, you are going to come out more than conquerors. Are you hearing what I'm saying, friends? Glory be to Jesus. Who says there's an amen to that? This is why we come to church. I'm looking at the time. This is why we come to church. We come to church so that we can become all that God intends. We can be shaped, fashioned into the image, into the shape, into the form that can fully fulfill everything in the plan in the purpose of God for our lives. So this is our month of leadership. And you are now made for governance. Revelation chapter 5, 8 to 10. When you have time to read it, the Bible said that, you know, right around the throne of God, the Bible said the 24 elders began to sing a song from verse, verse 9 and 10. And the song was based on the prayer of the saints. And it ascended to God's presence. In incense, which was the prayer of the saints. Coming before, are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Bible said they were singing a new song. And what was the song they were singing? They said, the Bible said that the, 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 you, are, you are slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood. And out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. That includes your tribe. That includes your tongue. That includes your people. That includes your nation. For what purpose? Verse 10 says he has made us kings and priests to reign upon the earth. So we are made for governance. We're not here to tiptoe through life or be on the sidelines of events. We're not here to be an inconsequential lot to the scheme of things. No! Made to reign. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. We have received abundance, enough resources, abundance of grace, and of the gift of righteousness to reign in life. Not just in eternity, in life. To reign in life. Through Christ Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are here to occupy. And it doesn't matter where your starting point is. Psalm 105 and verse 12. When God was making promises to them, they were few in number. Yea, very few. That was how they started. But not how they ended. Only how they started. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 12 verses after. Verse 24. He multiplied his people greatly. He made them stronger than their enemies. Though your beginning may be small, but your latter hand shall greatly, not just increase, greatly. Somebody shall greatly. Amen. See, there's greatness in my future. Shout it loud. 
Hallelujah. It doesn't matter your starting point. It doesn't matter. Please listen to me this morning. I'm in my legacy years. Listen to me this morning. Listen. 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 It's a responsibility to God for me to steward this privilege well. I'm conscious of that. Listen. Listen. You're made for governance. And the question is, to what end am I here to reign? To what end? Has God put me in charge of things? To what end will God create space for me in a crowded place? To what end? Why should God make room for me? Why should it be that out of the competition, no matter how many people want the same position, grace gives me an advantage? Why? Why? Because whatever it is you want in life, you are not the only one who wants it. Don't you know that? All that run in a race, run all, but one obtains the prize. The job you are doing right now, you are not the only person who applied for that position. The next thing you will ever want, even organizations, people who start out together, entry level, five years down the line, somebody has only moved two steps. Another person has moved three, four, five steps. Is that not so? That's how life is. Just because we started on the same day doesn't mean that life has an obligation to pace our movement. No! Your movement to a large extent is not just informed by sheer determination. There is providence at work. Providence at work. Except the Lord build the house. The labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord watches over the city. The watchmen wake but in vain. Before you become ungrateful because of where you are. Thinking I should have gone beyond this. Just think about others. Who are still far behind you. Who are not less qualified. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are married, you are complaining about your marriage. Many of your mates wish they were married. Wish they were married. You are married, are complaining about this or that. Oh, I have a job. The job is not, the money is not enough to take me home. It's just taking you halfway. Some cannot even leave the house. They can't even leave the house. You, you can still go some few miles towards the house. Then you can take the rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is enough to be thankful for. I'm trying to establish today that wherever you are, grace made it to happen. And that God is an investor. If God has placed you anywhere, you must have a reason for it. And you can't be the reason why he's doing what he's doing. He's the reason. Listen, everything revolves around him. What's around you? Romans 11, 36. Of him... Through him and to him. Of him. Romans eleven thirty six. Of him. Through him and to him. So it's not about you. The reason why he gave you a wife is not so that you can express your libido. Dogs also get on heat. Because, just look at me like that. <laughs> it's not about all of that. It's not about all of that. You know, when we were young, we said, ah, I said, Jesus can't come now. I must get married before he comes. Because haven't lived like this, celebrate before I'm getting married. You didn't touch a woman before I got married. I must touch one no? before Jesus will come. Ah, because we can't touch them in heaven. Let's touch, let's touch what we want to touch here. <laughs> I lived. I was a 28-year-old virgin when I got married. 28 year old. I had not seen anything before. That's a, when I got, got married, I was confused. I didn't know what to do. Nobody told me what to do. I thought they had just me during the time that we were doing the dancing at the, at the wedding. I was praying money. Everybody just me. Ah, nothing's happening. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you can imagine saying, ah, you know, but that's not why God gave me a wife. That's not why God gave you one. That's not why God gave you children. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To flaunt and say, me too, moti bisi, moti brasi, moagbanyong, lorile. 
Some people actually take that scripture literally. In 15 years of marriage, they have seven children. That's really a banyum. That's not why God gave you all of that. No. No. Those children are not yours. They're just in your custody. Children are the heritage of the Lord. If he gave you a position, there is a reason for it. For Samuel 17 and verse 29. Is there not a cause? Is that not a reason? There is a reason for everything God does. Every single thing. Look at Isaiah 45. And the Bible says, I think, is in verse, verse 18. It said, God did not create the earth in vain. He created the earth to be inhabited. So everything God made, he made it for a reason. For a reason. For a reason. And that reason is not just material. It's transcendental. That's why in Revelation 4, the Bible says in verse 11, he said you are worthy because you created all things for your pleasure. And for your pleasure they were. Not for those things pleasure. For his own pleasure. The creator's pleasure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? His own pleasure. Isaiah 43 and verse 21. These people have I formed for myself. Not for themselves. For myself. And they will show forth my praise. Show forth. That's why he had to be telling Esther through Mordecai. Who knows whether you have come into the kingdom. Listen, if you are richer than others, it's not just intelligence. Oh. God is seeing you like a channel. A kingdom trustee. What is it that you have? First Corinthians 4 verse 7. That you did not receive. What is it? That you didn't receive. Before the Bible said that Isaac reaped. Genesis 26. And verse 11. Verse 12. There was famine in the land. And in the same year, Isaac sowed and received a hundredfold. KJV because he's received. And I love that. Why? Because the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him. So, only she, 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 it is, vain. it is vain for you to rise up early, sit up late, eat the bread of sorrows. I've been to a few places. I've not gone too far, but I've been to a few places. In the month of July alone, I was in seven European countries. On holiday, preparing for my 15th birthday. At my own expense, I was going to see life. Don't be angry. I could afford it and I did it. But as I went to places, I saw that I met friends, people that... I left the country 20 years ago. They were not better. They were not better. They were not better. Thank God for them, but they were not better. They were not better at all. Not better. I'm not saying don't travel. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not saying that. Think about it. Life Proverbs 10, 22. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and hides no sorrow. Not location, sir. It is the help of God. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come my help. I mean, I go to some countries, people will be coming to ask me for money. Me. And I've spent it devalued. Devalued. Diva. I was talking. <laughs> I said, how are you guys coping? Somebody was telling me that in, 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 in 2014, his salary was like 11 million. That money is stronger now in terms of conversion to dollars. He's now earning about 40 million now, but he's earning lesser. Because 11 million 2014 is a stronger amount of money. Than 40 million 2023. God has to help you. I'm telling you, God has, oh yes, you are done for. God has to help you. Now, when God now begins to help you, you need to know God is helping you. 
and you need to find out from him why he's helping you. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. You shall remember it is the Lord your God that gives you the ability to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant. It is the Lord your God that gives you the ability to get wealth. That he may establish. So there is a reason for it. Reason for position. Reason for possession. Reason for everything that you have in your life. You are a steward. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain you are going to live not with a closed fist, with an empty behind when it's time for you to go. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Why? So why would God make your night to rain? Revelation 11 verse 15 tells us why. Revelation 11 verse 15 says, it says that when the seventh angel sounded, the statement coming from the sound of the trumpet was, now the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and it shall reign forever. The kingdoms. So the reason why God will put you in a position of leadership is so that whatever you are leading becomes an extension of heaven. Note that down. The reason why God will put you in charge to reign is so as to create more colonies for himself on earth. Colonies. That's what an embassy is. An extension of a home country. An extension of a home country. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An extension of a home country. Now you see, as a Christian, when you lead anything right, God becomes well represented there. When you lead anything right, listen, he said that we be done on earth as it is. So a marriage can look like heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can look like heaven. When somebody is leading anything right, as a child of God, it becomes an extension of heaven on the face. Didn't Jacob say in Genesis 28 and verse 17, he said, this is the gate of heaven. This is the house of God. And he was talking about a location on earth. Look at it. Genesis said, how awesome is this place? Genesis 28, if you can give it to me. And verse 17. Oh, mara, bada, bada, bada. He said, how awesome is this place? This is not other than the house of God. And this, and this was a location on earth. And this is the gate of heaven. So there is a way you can run things on half air. It will look like we're in heaven. Like we're in heaven. Listen. Hebrews 7. The Bible was describing the encounter of Abraham with Melchizedek. And in stressing personality, verses 1 and verse 2, he was called Melchizedek, the person that Abraham encountered. And in verse 2, the Bible tells us, first being interpreted king of righteousness, and afterward, the king of peace, or the king of Salem. And that is the order. King of righteousness. When you lead anything right, the effect of leading it right will be peace. If you lead the family right, there'll be peace in that family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? First king of righteousness. I told you last week in passing that righteousness, as defined in the Bible, Matthew 6, 33, amplified classic. Righteousness, amplified classic, means God's way of doing and being right. How God responds to circumstances. That is righteousness. Matthew 6. Look at him. His way of doing. He said, but seek. Oh yeah, everybody read it together. Everybody read it together. His way of doing and being right. That is righteousness. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes, if you're hearing me, say amen. Yes. Alright. The Bible now says that when you start doing things the way God will do it, the effect of that is peace. Hebrews 7 and verse 2. First king of righteousness and then 
king of Salem or Shalom. Shalom and Salem are the same. You hear what I'm saying? From the etymology, root word, Shalom, Salem. Um, as salam alaikum, that is peace upon this house. Alaikum wa salam, peace back to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's just, it's a Middle Eastern um, banter. Does anybody hear what I'm saying this morning? It's not Islamic, it's the Middle Eastern banter. As salam alaikum, alaikum wa salam, peace upon this house, peace back to who is coming to this house. So, what produces peace is somebody leading things right. Isaiah 32 and verse 17. Oh, I'm just, I'm just assuming this morning that somebody wants to hear what I'm saying. So I'm going to continue to say it. And for those who don't want to hear it, you're just a part of our live audience. Thank you for coming. Isaiah 32 verse 17. He said, the work of righteousness is peace. The fact of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. When you lead anything right, there will be no crisis. There will be peace. All the agitation around is because somebody in leadership isn't leading things right. Isaiah 60 verse 18 says there will be no there will be, it's a violence will no longer be hard in your land. There will be no wasting or destruction within your borders. But there is a reason for that. Go to verse 17. The last sentence in verse 17 says that your officers will be called peace and your magistrates will be called righteousness. And the consequence of having people who do right in the justice system is that there will be no violence. The reason for insecurity is because there is bad leadership. There is misgovernance. So the, 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 the after effect of misgovernance, and then there's an inequity in the land, is insecurity. So when you steal the money for everybody and you arrogate it to yourself, what you will do is to create a restiveness in the rest of the people. So even the money you stole, you can't enjoy it with peace of mind. You can't have peace of mind. That's why the police force is, is stretched. You know why? There are too many big men who need security details. Nobody needs security details in England. Everybody goes on their own. In fact, the police don't carry guns. At best, they carry clubs. At best. In England. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't see anybody carrying guns. But here, everybody needs bodyguard. Every big man needs bodyguard. There are neighborhoods where they don't get anything because there's nothing to guard there. If you are living behind here, what do you want to guard? The land? Or the cardboard you are sipping on? The reason why that is happening in a country that is the sixth largest producer of oil is because of misgovernance. If there's good leadership, Nigeria can work for everybody. Work for everybody. It was when Nigerians went to Dubai that they began to steal. In Dubai, they don't steal. There's no need to steal. Because everybody at the level was being taken care of because of visionary leadership. The first time I go to Dubai was about 20 years ago. No need to steal. No, no need to have even camera. Nigerians went to the place. I said, ah, I put that one baby open. Kill into my And they said, they're stealing. They rounded all of them up. All of them up. That they're stealing. Because of misgovernance. So when you're a badly guy, you have to be looking behind your shoulders. You're a bad leader. You're bad. But you're a good leader. System. Isaiah 11 and verse 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. They shall not hurt 
Nobody is thinking of how to act smart, how to take care. Nobody will come to church and be hiding their phone. In church, you have to hide your phone in church. I was in a store in Italy. I forgot my bag, my handbag, with many things inside my ID card, my all my big, all my bank cards, and I, I didn't even know where I forgot it. No, my bank card. I forgot my my. I tell, tell her. I forgot my. Where well, I was buying something. My card. And I had left. When I, where is it? I was on the bus. Where is it? Where? When I looking around, looking around, from shop to shop. Uh, oh, and because you know I'm black. There were not many that were black. It's not like London. Ah, is this man? We, we came. Your card is still here. They, they didn't even say. They didn't even say. Uh, show show proof. There's trust that I can't be coming to claim what is not mine. There is trust. You are zoomed to always be truthful. There's trust in this place. <laughs> I was traveling one time. They both followed me. We traveled together. I said, some people are going to travel with us. We are giving them money to buy fuel into the car that we used to follow us. Follow me. I said, they go and check if the, the fuel is in the car. Debo came and said, "Is there?" I said, "You know." He said the driver says so. I said, "Oh yeah, go by." <laughs> go and check the gauge. Are you are taking the driver's word. That is the level of trust deficit. The, we that is, we get them. We followed them to the filling station on Sunday. They bought the fuel. They took the car off. We don't know what could happen between yesterday and this morning. I said, "Check the gauge." Oh, I must have felt more one, but I believe I'm one better. It's God who believe, not men who believe in Nigeria. Why? Bad leadership. Bad leadership. I need to stop. I've not even started my message. Are you blessed? Bad leadership. Bad leadership. Bad leadership. When we lead things right, the effect is that everybody fears better. You lead things right. Lead your family right. Lead th- whatever it is. Some people, God begins to bless them and the blessing begins to provoke greed in them. Greed in them. Begins to feed their weakness. There's a reason for the blessing. There's a reason for where you are. And if God can trust you at this level, he won't take you beyond this level. Though. If you go beyond it, you only jumped up, they're going to come down. You only jumped up. And people jump up in life. And you think, ah, he has armored. No, it's not growth. It's a swelling. And whatever swells, eventually we shrink back. Just normal size. But when God lifts a man, his path shines brighter and brighter. Onto a perfect day. Let's do this right, friends. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let's do life. Let's, let's become God's counter-narrative to how things have been done so far. All around. He said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's what we are called a model. A model, a pointer to God's method. How God wants life to be run, things to be done. That's why we are here. Glory to God. Stop a bit. That's why we're here. See, I'm made for governance. See, I'm a steward of everything that God has placed at my disposal. Listen, friends, everything rises and falls on leadership. That's why when a team is not playing well, they don't change the players, they change the coach. Because everything rises and falls. On leadership. When an organization is not doing well, they change the man at the helm of affairs. They remove the CEO or the MD. And they start headhunting for somebody who can get the job done. When Saul failed, God looked for a replacement. It's always leadership. Leadership. Everything rises and falls. On leadership. And let me tell you this. Any seat you get in the days to come. 
you are a replacement to a failed leader. NFC to guys. NFC to guys. So either replacing a failed leader or you are privileged to continue the legacy of a successful one. Because nobody leaves permanently. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Nobody leaves permanently. And leadership does not start with leading others. It starts with leading yourself. Proverbs 16.32. If you can look at it, I think it's Proverbs 16.32. I'm not sure. We read verse 29, verse 32 is what I'm looking for. Proverbs 16. If you guys can help me. Proverbs 16. Okay. Can anybody help us to check Proverbs 16? Around verse 29. Now. Has anybody found it? Yeah. What's the next verse? I'm looking for a verse. Talking about self leadership. Yes. What, what, what verse is that? 30. Verse 32. Thank you. So. Give her a microphone. Let her read it for us. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules the spirit than he who takes a city. So, leading yourself is where leadership starts from. Making yourself to do the right thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not making others to do the right thing. Or making yourself to do it. So you don't need to drive people, you lead them. Because you are modeling everything that you want them to do. You're modeling everything that you want them to do. You're modeling everything. We're going to be continuing from here next time. Is that okay? Lift your hand and say, Father, I receive grace to lead. And to lead right. Go ahead and pray. Whether you're, whether you're leading a business, leading a team, leading a family, whatever God has called you to lead. Whatever God has called you to lead. I receive grace to lead and to lead it right. To lead it right. I won't fail at it. Saul failed at it. But I received grace. From now on, to begin to lead whatever it is. And it begins with leading yourself. Making yourself to do what is right. Not just what feels good, but what is right. I don't know how this word minister to you this morning, but I would like you to just talk to God as I receive grace to be a doer of God's word. Mantre di brononcle di janam brodonble di gam. Mane mangre di bozube di brenende coco si batabayam. Mande de 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 Brian <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you are in your leadership journey. I don't know. I don't know where you are. Mam the mumbra dibla, number dubla dibla, just the bamba rika yaba dike yagada. 
In the name of Jesus. Exodus 18, 21. I want us to look at the verse of scripture. Exodus 18, 21. Want to go, everybody? Stop. This is a very loaded verse of scripture. So everything in that first part before the end speaks to two things. Competence and character. Able men. And that's competence. The rest is character. The fear God. The eight covetousness. The men of truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Men of truth. So competence, non-negotiable. You don't want a sincere pilot who comes to church. You want a trained pilot. Can say, "Oh, I love God, so I can perhaps perform surgery on you." Competence. 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 Says that a man who is diligent in his business. Who stand before kings. Not before mere men. Competence. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then number two. Character. Character. I don't want a smart devil. And there are many smart devils. They are extremely intelligent. But they are bent in their character. They are bent. Be careful. Stop justifying your excesses and weaknesses. It will go from weakness to practice. From practice to lifestyle. But you don't you don't have a sense of wrong anymore. No sense of wrong anymore. No sense of wrong anymore. It will only be strange to us. It will not be strange to you anymore because you have become so used. To live in like that. So, they're wondering why are they, what's wrong with them? Because your heart has become hardened. Hardened. You've lost tenderness. Let, let me stop there. I was going to read the second part of that verse, but let's just stop there. Let's just pray. Psalm 139 is our prayer this morning. Verse 23 and verse 24. Come and look at it. Psalm 139. We're going to read this to pray. Psalm 139. One to go. Whatever you need to walk on in me, walk on it, oh God. Go ahead and pray that prayer. It could be hunger. It could be hunger. Some people can't handle their temper. Unnecessary hard busts every time. Some people cannot be corrected. They can't be corrected. Whatever it is, they can't handle finance. There's nothing you can put in their care and sleep with your two eyes closed. Where God is taking you is, is too far, very far, very far. 